thank you. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Do you have a good memory? Yeah? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> well, a woman had registered for a seminar on improving her memory. And before the seminar, she was standing outside talking to one of her friends, just talking about this person who did her wrong and what they said and what they did. And, and the other woman's like, God, oh, just, just forget it. And the woman said, no, the way, they, the way that she treated me, I'm never going to forget that. She was at a seminar to improve her memory, and yet she had a very good memory. The <clears throat> problem with most of us with our good memories is that we focus on the wrong things, or we fill our minds with the wrong memories, something that's unpleasant. Well, for September and October, we've had the theme of fearless living. And, of course, we covered the book, The Eye of the Storm, and looked at you know, nothing and nobody is against me, and willing to look beyond physical appearances to see uh, the good that's there. Uh, so this week, I'm talking about, you know, this healing the hurt is the title. <coughs> Hurts are held in our memory. And while we have good memories, it's important for us to develop a good forgettery and being willing to just let it go. Now, personally, I feel that forgetting may be a little bit too much. But what I found is when I get to the point where I can remember something without the emotional charge, you know, when I, when I get to that point, it's kind of like, okay, I remember that happening to me. It was unpleasant, but boy, what a spiritual lesson I got through that experience or from that person. So <clears throat> the idea is to just recognize the emotional attachment that I had to the outcome that I wish had happened. Occasionally I'll hear someone say, I don't have to take that from anybody. Well, by using that tone and using that sentence, you can tell that that person's already taken it, <laughs> taken it on, and assigned meaning to it. So it is true, I don't have to take that. If someone hands you a stinky gift, you can refuse the gift. But often we have no idea what the other person is thinking, what their motivations are. I find that virtually everybody is operating from their accumulated knowledge, filtering it through their filters, and they get to the point where they say, you know, they're just trying to do the best they can. And sometimes we're pulled into that drama, pulled into that opportunity for healing on both of our sides. So how much of this can I take? That's a good question. How much do I want to take? If you're thinking, well, this person doesn't deserve my forgiveness until they apologize, or they don't, forgive, they don't deserve my love, well, that might be true, but you deserve to give it. You see, whatever we focus on is going to expand. So if we focus on things like resentment, or anger, or, uh, you know, or revenge, that will multiply and return to us in this world. So, if you ever find yourself saying, why did this person do this to me? Subtract the last two words, to me. So why did this person do this? And a lot of times when I'm in a, a situation where I can kind of figure out this isn't about me, you know, just let's explore it a little bit more. Let's talk about this a little bit more. What's going on? You know, why did that person do it? And what I find is, it's me that's assigning a meaning to it, or it's me that's just recognizing that, hey, this person and I have, to, and I have an opportunity to, to do a spiritual healing here. Sometimes we're just feeling insecure in our role. You know, maybe we feel inadequate or unworthy. Um, but <clears throat> often another person's behavior is no indication of uh, how I need to label myself. And yeah, we want things to be pleasant. Narcissus, of course, this, the mythical, was, was looking into a pool of water and just was admiring his own beauty. But then when the water was troubled, he got angry that he couldn't see himself anymore. And that often happens with us. When a conflict comes into our, world, our life, we're just not seeing ourselves anymore. And we get angry about it, rather than f allowing the embracing of that conflict to create the peace that's, that's possible. Another kind of hurt is having grief about a loved one who's passed away. You know, we feel abandoned by that loved one. 
wishing that things had been differently. But as we talked about in recent weeks, the situation that we're in right now has a wonderful spiritual gift for us by just saying, God, show me the good in this. There are countless opportunities to feel hurt if we're so inclined. <clears throat> and yes, if we're so inclined. We have a choice. So do we surrender our power to someone else and let them define the moment? Or do we recognize that, no, I can return to my center and I can face this situation from a place where I know that I'm connected with God, my mind is directed to the, connected to the divine mind, and I can ask for the guidance in that situation to be understood in my own mind. We accumulate our memories, we build our filters, and as we do that, we can construct, or I should say constrict, the divine flow that's always there for us. We're always in like a river of divine substance that can be created into anything that we want. But if we get into resentment, anger, frustration, you know, that starts to constrict that flow. The Scottish poet Robert Burns in the 19th, or I'm sorry, the 1700s wrote about the good wife Kate, who was at home nursing her wrath to keep it warm. The word resent, resending of something. And so sometimes we're, we're resending the old unpleasantness, bringing it forth in our memories. Once again, can we ask God, show me the good in this situation? A lot of times, if an old thing is triggered for me and it's brought it up, it's my opportunity to say, wow, yeah, okay. I had that experience. I recognize what I learned from that experience, how it made me stronger. And then I can just let the emotional attachment to it go. Well, <clears throat> uh, we build this organic thing through our thoughts. Whatever we focus on expands. So... We can dissolve it, though, and release it. In unity, we talk about metaphysical malpractice. You know, when we recognize that our thoughts and our emotions create, we start to get all caught up and sometimes beat ourselves up about what we're experiencing. And often, what we're experiencing might be an outpicturing of our thoughts and beliefs, but it's also an opportunity for us to heal to grow. So holding on to a feeling of strong hurt is like a kind of intemporary insanity. Now a lot of people have heard, you know, the Albert Einstein quote, <clears throat> you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. <laughs> but in standard psychological evaluation, insanity is when you're not in control of your behavior. So am I in control of my behavior? If I'm, if I'm saying something I can't help but feeling hurt with what that person did to me. It's like, well, then I'm not in control of my own behavior. And I may be experiencing temporary insanity. And sometimes this can be infectious, it can be part of a group, or it can be something like happened here in the United States after September 11th. Everybody going through all of the various emotions of grief and embracing fear rather than love. That's our choice, love and fear. Some people think love and hate, but as I've said before, hate is actually a reaction to fear. It's a delusion of thinking that, okay, I'm going to take power over this fear by reacting in hate. <clears throat> now, unity teaches us that we need to follow our inner divine guidance and recognize the outer appearances maybe are not true in the spirit, but they sure, certainly seem real at the time. I want to show you a slide. <clears throat> This is a fellow named Baird Rustin. Of course, Baird passed away in 1987. I know <coughs> many people in the white community aren't familiar with Baird, but he was actually Martin Luther King Jr.'s right-hand man. He was the fellow who actually organized the March on Washington in August of 1963. So he was a great statesman of the civil rights movement. He was in Spokane, Washington at one point, and he was, got on an elevator with some other people, and a uh, white man on the elevator said, lace up my shoes. And a lot of people in the elevator said, oh my God. But Baird Rustin didn't think twice about it. He, he stooped down and tied the man's shoes. And when he stood up, the man held out a tip and Baird said, oh, I didn't do that for money. I just assumed you needed the help. Mm -hmm. 
Now, he had a choice and what a meaning he was going to assign to that. <clears throat> and the mo wonderful thing was it is about the man <clears throat> who wanted his shoes laced up recognized that something had happened there and he asked you know, to have a chance to talk with Baird. And they talked for hours and he got to really got a sense of his own prejudice and the way he had been raised, you know, to believe things about certain people. And he became very active in the civil rights movement, helping Baird Rustin there in Spokane, Washington. We have our choice of how we're going to react. Now you might say, Bob, I couldn't do that. Well, I, frankly, I can't do that all the time myself as, as much as I try. <clears throat> but even in the Gospels, we realize, you know, we read where places where Jesus got angry, Jesus cursed, <laughs> Jesus turned the tables at the temple. Um, so yeah, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. And sometimes that human experience is unfolding in ways that we wish it wasn't. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> rather than rationalizing, I've always been emotional, it's like, no. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. I have emotions, but I'm not my emotions. I have my thoughts, but I'm not my thoughts. And I can actually manage and rightly direct my thoughts and my feelings, my emotions. By just recognizing when they're there, it's like, I don't have to follow this. I don't have to jump on this horse and ride it. <clears throat> so, let me be clear. It's not that we need to condone toxic behavior or disruptive behavior. But the key is, when somebody does something like that, just observing what it is they did. You know, I noticed you did this, and I'm trying to understand what happened there. Like Baird Rustin. It's okay, you need your two shoes tied. Oh. <laughs> you didn't, we didn't assign the meaning to it ahead of time. Well, it's just recognizing what, what it is that we're observing and reflecting that back to the person. There's an affirmation that I heard actually was from Eric Butterworth and he attributed it to someone else. He says, a great affirmation to use a lot of times as we're going through life and wishing that things were better. He says, Father, forgive me for expecting in the human beings the things that are only found in the divine. Now every year at just about every Unity Center on New Year's Eve, we do a burning bowl service. You know, of course, we come together and you have an opportunity to write down all of the things you want to let go of. You know, any, any anger, any resentment. And uh, you take that piece of paper and go out here into the courtyard. We've got a barbecue grill set up there. And you put the paper in and you see it incinerate before your eyes. Wonderful symbolism, letting go. Then we come back in here and write you know, perhaps our goal, or we, we nickname it our letter to God, you know, and then we keep it here at the church and mail it out, you know, mid-year so that you can see. You know, did you follow through on the consciousness that you were trying to create on New Year's Eve? You do realize, though, that you don't have to just limit that to New Year's Eve. <clears throat> we can do that every day if we want to. And, uh, you know, and you write out just your anger, get it all down on paper. In fact, Abraham Lincoln did this. And the way they discovered it was that after he was assassinated, in his desk drawer were all of these angry letters to people that he never mailed. And, uh, and his wife shared that, yeah, he found that just getting it out of, off of his chest and onto the paper was enough to just get it, you know, get it out of his system. Then he'd just shove it in this one file that he had. So I've had people at home, they'll do that, tear it up, toss it in the toilet, flush it down. Now, there's good symbolism for you. <laughs> Get rid of all of that stuff. So, yeah, it, we can do this on a regular basis, and we should do it on a regular basis. In fact, Charles Fillmore, every evening, would, for, would set aside 20 minutes to just do forgiveness prayers and recognize, you know, where, you know, of course, the reconciliation process that a lot of you guys uh, did explore the, over these last two months, you know, just sitting down with those basic questions like, what could I have done better today? You know, is there any amends I need to make to someone tomorrow? And just writing all of that down and then letting it go. Now, I will warn you, uh, if you do want to burn the paper, don't do it inside, do it outside. <laughs> I actually had a friend of mine in college, uh, she had some uh, papers that were confidential material and in her dorm room, she decided to put it all in the, because in, in, they told her to get rid of it. She, she burned the paper in the dorm room 
well, the paper starts flying all over the place and sticking to the walls, she started a fire. <laughs> and so that's why I always remind people, it's like, yeah, not a good idea. So we write it down, we let it go, whatever it is it takes, have we truly let it go? And by that, I mean, could you now say that you never want to talk about it again? Sometimes those emotional attachments are very seductive. <laughs> you say, ooh, well, you know, if, if, I, if I can't have revenge, at least I've got this resentment. <laughs> Not a good idea. It's like saying, you know, it's like, well, I, that was a close call, but I'm going to carry this bottle of poison around with me from this point forward. We don't need to hand out justice. I mean, yeah, you know, like I said before, we can uh, call people on their behavior, but hey, there is something more powerful than us that makes sure that there's balance in the world. So another question is if you find yourself, well, I've forgiven him, but I sure hope he gets his. No, that isn't a truly letting go. In Unity, and a definition that was made up by a wonderful professor at Unity Seminary is love. Expressing love is wanting my greatest good to unfold, but also wanting everybody else's greatest good to unfold at the same time. Holding ill will against someone else is not a good idea. In the Old Testament, in the last chapter of Genesis, we read the story of Joseph. Joseph is symbolic of our imagination. Remember, there were the 12 brothers, just like the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles. We all have these 12 spiritual gifts within us, and Joseph is a story of imagination, going from an infantile imagination to a mature imagination. But at the end, you know, his brothers who had sold him into slavery come face to face with him again, and Joseph says, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be alive as they are today. I'm going to have Duncan put up our slide. This is this week's takeaways, and they are in your bulletin. <clears throat> so remember, the temporary insanity is just holding on to that pain, holding on to those emotions, holding on to those old thoughts that are unpleasant for you. Can we get to the point where we can untie our emotional attachment to it, releasing that unpleasant emotion? And remember, we're not our emotions. We have emotions. We have thoughts. But we have the power to manage and direct them. And that forgiveness is actually for us, for me, not for the other person. Forgiveness allows us to just use that power of renunciation to let go of these things. And then we can open our mind to the divine mind and have the divine idea that is right and perfect for each of us to express come into manifestation in this world. Our closing video is from Steve Hartman of the CBS Evening News showing us a man who is grieving the loss of his spouse and the angel who came into his life. <laughs> 